As always, you know, my training is certainly, it's a personal pursuit. I wanna do something that makes me feel good, but I'm oftentimes researching, you know, what we're doing in, in persistent and functional bodybuilding. And there's a big in initiative or project that we have to release a new training track in the coming months. And I'm putting in the work on that program right now. And, you know, really what are the, what are the, and the guiding thought behind this is, what are the pillars of functional bodybuilding what makes it really unique and if you could only learn 10 things about functional bodybuilding what would those be and let's represent that in a in a program and uh, of course everyone knows that's done fun functional bodybuilding that there's endless you know progressions and variations that we can provide and that's often the fun of it but when life gets busy and we need to strip it down to the fundamentals what does that look like so here we are Tempo, baby. <laughs> well, you see, see everything. Daytime, a color swirl, not like a diamond ring. I got feelings in these bones that no other could do. So put down your little phone. I'm calling out to you. Can't bring me down. Can't bring me down. No, no, it's heavy. Especially when you pause at the top on a, on a row. I find pauses on certain exercises emphasize different things. A pause in the bottom of a squat helps you focus on position, helps you learn how to generate power without the reflex bouncing and the stretch reflex. Pull-ups, presses, all different types of stimulus when you pause. But this one, when you contract fully at the top, pinning that dumbbell to your chest or your side, your ribs, holding for a second, it's a massive contraction. It's like maximal contraction in the lat and the rhomboids, the rear delts, really teaches you a ton about mind muscle connection. Helps to even accentuate the, the work that you'll do on the, on the lowering and the concentric by having that extra pause at the top. So it's just so money for, for dumbbell rowing, for sure. seconds on the bike it's a little conditioning circuit so 60 seconds on the bike 10 dumbbell deadlifts crawl for 30 meters and then uh, double unders double unders so rest in between sets four sets get the breathing rate up and then kind of two different movement patterns you know shoulder intensive kind of with the crawling and then hinging for the uh, you know with the deadlift and putting a breather on the at the beginning and a breather at the end with the double unders. So kind of get that like bookends of like cardiovascular work with strength and stability work in the middle and endurance. Yeah, I'm gonna do, it's, it's very controlled pacing. So the idea is that I could, I have this computer screen on the assault bike that's gonna allow me to see what my output looks like. I'm doing four sets today and my output should be the same on every set and I should finish still able to go right into my deadlift. So I shouldn't get done with 60 seconds and be whew, need 30 seconds to catch my breath before I start. This is continuous work for the duration of the set. My quads are way more juiced on that than I thought. Pacing was great. I, I got about a 60 to 90 second rest and I'll do the same thing. Get the quadruped crawl. It's leggy, a lot of legs. And you know, deadlifting is, you know, very much a hamstring glute back exercise traditionally, but because the dumbbells are so low profile, there's that extra little squat that I have to do to get into the bottom position. So going from the bike to that into the quadruped crawl was a little bit more on my quads than I thought I was gonna 
experience. I love that. It's like you learn new things doing this stuff. So I love researching and training with the intent to kind of better understand how movement combinations go together. I wouldn't have thought this would be a, you know, a particularly heavy quad focused workout, but here we are. My quads are smoked. One round in, here we go. starting to get more comfortable with the it usually happens like if you pace correctly in conditioning workouts then you arrive at this point and you're not like completely mind melted and panicked and thinking I'm not gonna be able to finish you're more in a position of as I feel right now I'm like okay I understand the how things flow I understand how my body's gonna feel before each discipline each element of the circuit which allows me to kind of bring the right attitude intention and focus energy where I can on you know my form and getting the right stimulus so yeah everything's dialed I am thinking also that you know this double under has like the the conditioning finisher of this circuit if you're not proficient at double unders it's gonna be very hard to do 50 of those while you're fatigued so thinking about what's the right and the most appropriate scaling option for somebody to get a similar stimulus. Uh, so those are the things I think about, but here we go. 